first YouTube video is done. It's up and it's uploaded. Um, I feel like I have just like a relief of anxiety now, gone <laughs> from me now that it's up. Um, I'm just over here by my beautiful cherry tree, my blueberries and a few of my potatoes. And I just thought today I would just take you through some of the stuff that I'm actually looking to grow this year and what I've been getting up to over the last couple of weeks. So I'll take you through some of the seeds that have kind of germinated and that are looking quite strong. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So I was feeling quite nervous to upload that um, first YouTube video, but I'm really pleased that I did it because um, I absolutely love what I'm doing and I just want to share it with other people and give other people ideas as well. If, if they have small space, like there's so much you can do even just in like a little pot, growing a little bit of lettuce. Um, so yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed it. So I'll take you through some of the stuff that I'm growing uh, this spring and some of the stuff that I've been up to the last couple of weeks to yeah, show you what I've been up to and what I've planted, what's growing, what hasn't grown for me and um, show you how things are getting on. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to start by showing you my, my tomatoes. I grew tomatoes last year. This is a different variety to what I grew last year. Um, here it is. So I've got four cherry tomatoes in there and then one random little pepper. But yeah, these are called red cherry. Um, they're coming on really well. I think they need to go into the ground very, very soon because they are busting out of their pot. Um, these are supposed to be kind of an early cropping variety, um, kind of lots of fruits per the truss. And yes, beautiful little red fruits. We grew so many tomatoes last year. We grew them in the main bed where I had the salad planted last week, uh, in the last video. And we had so many tomatoes like we had a glut of tomatoes and then it gets kind of cold here so obviously typically you're supposed to grow these in greenhouses but we um just grew them outside they grew really really well but basically when it got to like september october a lot of them hadn't ripened so we ended up taking off a load of them when they were green because i was worried about them getting blight and i bought them inside and they did ripen up really really well uh, but we just had a glut of green tomatoes, so I thought by choosing a cherry variety that crops early, they might mature a bit quicker and on the plant to save us getting that glut at the very end of the year, and then we might get tomatoes a bit early on, considering we're growing them outside. So that's kind of the reason behind choosing these ones. Um, so yeah, they're looking really healthy, but they do really need to get out of this container. Um, but it's it's still like the very end of... April at the minute so I'm a bit worried about putting them out like our last frost typically mid mid May mid March um but it just seems a little bit early to be putting out tomatoes uh, with no protection over them so I might just try and keep them in maybe give them a little bit of a liquid seaweed feed just to keep them going while they're in these pots and then plant them out after that so when I do plant them out I will probably take off these lower leaves here and plant them really deeply because obviously you can grow roots all the way up these these stems but aren't they beautiful so yeah I'm really chuffed with those I did have a problem when I did start these this is the earliest I've ever started tomatoes and you'll see in this cell here I had a problem with damping off like our house is really warm and I don't have like a fan on these to ventilate them so I would say if anyone's growing them super early on probably so more than you actually need and try and have a bit of ventilation on them just obviously to keep them growing strong but the rest have survived only one dampened off but a couple of my more of my peppers dampened off than than these um but yeah they're my cherry tomatoes um really super excited to get those in the ground and what else have we got so i sowed these about a week and a half ago so i've got some more marigold in the bottom of all these beds on these planters, this is the cherry tree and on my plum tree, I'm going to ground cover the whole bottom of these in the marigolds. I'm not sure, can you see them? I'll give you a little close up. 
but I put like 15 marigolds in each, the bottom of each of these pots just to act as a ground cover to try and um, keep the moisture in because obviously they are in containers and in the summer they dry up really really quickly so and it's also to give a pop of colour and to kind of attract some predator insects because these trees really suffered with um, aphids last year but considering it was the first year we put a garden in I'm not surprised that that happened I just feel like it was just an influx and I just need a bit of time for like everything to kind of start working in synergy with each other. Uh, so more marigolds that I can plant in and out of all the other stuff that goes in the beds around the corner. And I got some patty pan. So that's a summer squash and it's called sunburst. So it will be like a, like a saucer, like a really like alien looking saucer type fruit. Um, it'll be bright yellow and and yeah, I'm going to do this instead of courgette this year. Last year I did courgette and it was so prolific. Like I felt like the leaves were like this big. They took up all the space in the garden. I couldn't walk past anything. Every time I walked in the garden, it was snap. So I just thought maybe go for a smaller type of squash. I mean, look how beautiful those leaves are. Um, all, I only planted four because I only planned to plant two, but I didn't know how well. I've never grown them before, so I thought I'll plant more than I need, as always. And I'll plant out the two strongest ones and I'll give away the other two to family or friends at work. And yeah, really looking forward to getting those going. I don't think they'll be as prolific as the courgette. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to getting those in the ground. And then I have some celery. It's a different variety to what I grew last year. Last year I grew uh, just, just a standard self-blanching variety of celery. This year I got these seeds from the Irish Seed Savers and it's going to be like a red stalk on them they look really fragile still at the moment but celery takes a really long time to grow um so yeah really looking forward to getting those in the ground um i'm i'm not sure where i'm going to plant these yet because last year i kept them in containers and then popped them into kind of like like a bath of water for all the world because they really like to stay moist um they like lots and lots of water, like kind of boggy sort of conditions. So I'm only planning to really plant out three, but if the rest of them keep going, I'll plant out more of them. But yeah, really looking forward to those because they're going to give a lot of interest, I think, in the garden because like as much as I love all the green that's happening at the minute because everything's been so brown, I just love like a variety of colour. So I think for these ones with the red stalks, I think they're going to be absolutely beautiful. And I absolutely love celery. And the celery we grew last year was just out of this world like it was so different to what you actually eat in the shop I just actually still can't get over how different it is when you grow your own versus what you eat in the shop um so yeah really looking forward to getting those going yeah they are a little bit fragile but I think they'll they'll strengthen up like you would have seen I bring them out every morning if it's a nice day I put them over like a makeshift um cold frame um just to kind of acclimatize them and get them the most sun like we do have a sunny kind of south facing window that I pop them into but I have so many at the minute that um yeah they're all fighting for the best sunspot so that's what I've been doing with those so that's the celery it's just started to spit with rain hopefully it stays off that's the that's like the thing with spring isn't it you're not sure whether it's gonna be a good day or not <laughs> especially for filming that's what I'm realizing if I wasn't filming I would just plow on and just you know keep going but that's the thing when you have electrical equipment I even find that with my phone some days I come out and like I'll be pottering around and doing stuff or taking pictures and stuff for Instagram and then like I realize my phone's like face down and it's chucking down with rain but luckily my phone is waterproof so some more seeds that I started I had to do these twice because I popped them out and they actually got eaten by slugs. Um, it's been so mild that I just feel like it's better for them to be outside getting more sun and acclimatising to the weather than to leave them indoors. But through that, I got a bit complacent and obviously left them out overnight and they got eaten. So these are a mixture of Brussels sprouts and kale. So I started these Brussels sprouts, obviously they take a long time to grow. I grew sprouts last year, uh, but I bought them as little starter plants, kind of like this big from home base. They did really, really well, but just, I don't know, I just wanted to try from seed this year. So I think they take a while to grow. So the first set I sowed in March, and then the second set I grew about two weeks ago, and they're really coming on really, really strong. 
So these are the sprouts here. So there's four that have cropped up. Um, so I bring them in and out every day. <laughs> and then I've got some kale. Um, I grew a small bit of kale last year, but like that got infested with aphids. So I kind of left those to do their own thing. And I kind of wanted them to be kind of like a sacrificial sort of plant in the garden because I don't spray anything. Everything, I try as much as I can for it to be organic. They actually did really, really well. And what I should have done is I probably try to let it go to seed to keep the seed because I ended up having a very, very small crop off of it. Enough for like one, one dinner for two people um, in like early January. And yeah, they were so strong. So like, even though like they were infested with aphids, they lasted all through the winter. So yeah, I think I'm going to keep a few kale plants for like the start of the season and then I'm going to try and do a few more at the end of the season um, to last over the winter and hopefully knit them and try and up my winter vegetable game but yeah they're absolutely beautiful and kale when it's really small is actually really nice like it's not um it's not like strong it's 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 a lot more palatable I would say so like a baby leaf kale is lovely um especially roasted. I kind of say that about everything now with vegetables. So that's my kale and my sprouts. It's actually a dwarf variety, those those that, those kales. So they won't get too big. They won't be like the big tree sort of kales that you see. Kind of the leaves will only get about this, this sort of big. Um, my cucumbers. Oh, I grew, this is a cucumber variety called Market Moor. I grew them last year. They were super prolific so many fruits off them and they were probably my favorite thing to grow in the garden last year i didn't expect it to be my favorite thing but the flavor how productive the plant was um it was just it made me so happy so i went a bit crazy and i sowed 10 because <laughs> i tried an other variety of cucumber i had no luck germinating it back in the early of Early, early March and it was like a female only cucumber and I was going to try and do an experiment keeping that in the house because it's like self pollinating or something so I didn't have any luck with those and I was like desperate to get cucumbers and now I have nine I probably only need one I'm going to try and plant two of them uh, but it grows like this beautiful like dark green fruit with like spikes on it so if you are growing this variety but be careful when you're picking it because sometimes it can stab you in the hand. Um, but they like the more mature they get as a fruit, you can just brush off the spikes and they're absolutely fine. Um, so I plan to grow that up the back wall to cover all the wall at the back and it'll be slightly protected as well. Um, these are really, really suitable to grow outside. So if you're in a climate similar to us in Ireland where it's kind of like temperate, uh, it doesn't get too hot, um, rains a lot, <laughs> it's windy. Um, these would be a really good option. Um, and they're also kind of firm enough to pickle as well. So you can eat these both fresh and you can pickle them. I pickled like three jars of them last year just to try and they were beautiful. So absolutely love this variety of cucumber. I think the seeds were from unwind seeds. Um, but yeah, that's where I got them from and they were beautiful. And then I have my peppers and some extra tomatoes in here so with the peppers this is a Sophia variety pepper so they should grow like kind of long kind of five to seven inches they'll start green and then they as they mature they'll go red so hopefully we get some red ones but I'd say we'll probably get more green ones just because we are slightly cooler as a climate in terms of growing peppers so I've got a few growing, um, obviously as I said earlier I had a few problems with them dampening off um, but they're kind of growing strong there now and then have some extra peppers, uh, tomatoes in this side. What I'm going to do with those is try and grow them in like a window box so it's not kind of the typical way that you would grow tomatoes. I'm just going to try and see can I just increase my crop and have a slightly later crop than the ones I showed you earlier because obviously they're raring to go and will crop a bit earlier but I sowed these again early April and hopefully I can stagger kind of the crops get a smaller one I'm actually going to put these into window boxes and then I'm going to try and sow again in the summer some more tomatoes or I might try and propagate some of the suckers off of these into a window box to put in the house and try and get some over winter um, I'm not sure how that will work with the light levels and things but yeah it's a bit of a tomato experimenting year for me um, so yeah, same variety, red cherry 
and yeah hopefully get some beautiful fruits and veggies from those. So then I've got some extra salad bits to go in the main bed that we planted in that you saw in my last video. So I've got some beautiful rocket and some spring onions in there. Um, there's quite a few rocket in there but I think that lasts quite long you can keep picking at it so that's actually some of those are getting their their kind of their true leaves now so that's nearly ready to go out maybe if we get time and it doesn't <laughs> tip down with rain we'll put that outside um i've got some leeks these are called verdinet i got the seeds as well from irish seed savers um but yeah these will hopefully see us through kind of at the end of this year i've got two pots there's about 20 in there and the plan for these is when the potatoes come out over here that I'm gonna put these in place of the potatoes providing the potatoes don't get blight because then the soil is still usable and then I'm gonna grow a second set of leeks this week to use for overwintering so I'm gonna do like two types of crops of leek hopefully um, the theme as well is to kind of up my over winter vegetable game a little bit uh, grew leeks last year they grew amazingly had a slight a slight few of them come down with rust kind of the last kind of three or four but I'd say it's just because they were in the ground for so long um, so yeah really looking forward to getting these going um, leeks are one of my favorite vegetables particularly around the winter time soups and stews and yeah they're just a beautiful like it's one of my favorite like leek and potato soup is just my favorite so yeah super 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 nice um, these should grow like really big these are kind of a big variety um, and now I know a bit more about them, I'm going to grow them a little bit deeper. Um, but I'll show you those in like a few a few weeks because they're not ready to go out yet. They're really slow growing. I planted these. These have been in these pots for about eight weeks now and they're only really small. They're growing strong still. So there are my leeks. And I've got some more kind of salady bits here and herbs. So I've got onions in the middle. I've got coriander on the left and I've got parsley on the right. I have parsley left over actually from last year. Um, but the birds are trying to take it out of the ground. So I'm really glad I've sown a lot more parsley because what I thought would come back and bounce back really well in the spring hasn't done so much because <laughs> the birds are attacking it. So I keep reburying it, um, but it's starting to look a bit withered now and it's going a bit yellow. Um, I have some sunflowers. This is actually a competition I'm doing at work. <laughs> uh, who can grow the tallest sunflower? I've never grown sunflowers before. They're a little bit leggy, but I have them supported and they should be fine. Um, they're growing their kind of their true leaves now. So they're looking a bit stronger than they were. It's actually funny though, because where the bird feeder is, the sunflowers have dropped in obviously to the soil beneath and they have self seeded and they are looking a lot stronger than these. So I might just keep those growing and maybe if they grow taller, I'll submit those as my um, my entry to the uh, giant sunflower competition. Um, but it'd be super nice to get some interest higher up and maybe some seeds later on in the year for the birds to actually eat off of the sunflower itself. Um, and these will cover kind of the pockets that I have in the garden that are kind of like almost dead spaces because they're so shaded over. Um, so I hope they, they take off and they do well but I think I'm definitely going to need a few stakes on those because they're really leggy and then the last thing I wanted to show you is my beetroot um, I grew beetroot last year and it was so nice this is called Bicora's beet is the variety this is called so I popped in one seed into each of these trays here and as you can see there's loads of little plants that have popped up from one seed so the one thing I didn't get to show you yet was the beetroot. Uh, my camera died, so, and it started tipping down with rain. So I'm gonna pop in um, some of these salad bits now actually into this bed. Um, yeah, they look like they're raring to go. So I'm gonna plant out some rocket, some spring onions and some beetroot. And I might get the other salad that I showed you there earlier with the parsley and the coriander. And I might plant those out as well and just start filling up this bed. Um, so yeah do that now.